I've been a part of water walking since I was a child. Uh, my mom was a ceremonial person, so that's where I got to know the water walk, the rain dance ceremonies. A water walker is like a water protector. We usually do our water walks in the springtime. You know, it's a new season and everything's blooming. So we let go of all that trauma and anything that's, you know, negative. Honey. Nabe. Bunse kwageni dishna kost to jokini dodo them. Miigwech. So. Miigwech kajem nero kenegamiji on some monpi. Maba sa. Nabe. Miigwech sa. Insegish got monpi. We must say in sa. Growing up here, our family pretty much lived off the land. Uh, we would grab our water from springs, get our maple syrup from our sugar camp. We would cook over the fire. We all go out hunting uh, for deer. My dad had to drag me out. You know, when we're harvesting animals or the fish, you know, he would tell me kind of like rules in the traditional way. Like you don't take more than you have to. Or with my mom, you know, picking medicines. Like if there's not abundance of this type of medicine, then just leave it. I thought, you know, I thought I was just gonna stay home and be a mom. You know, I mo had to move off my reserve into the city and to finish my high school. And then I received my uh, diploma. You know, I just remember, I was like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do as a career. And then someone did just come up to me one time and said, well, why don't you go to school for the things that you do anyways? like you're passionate about, you're always out in the bush, you're always out harvesting, and it's like, why not go to school for that? Then I started looking into it, and there was two environmental schools, one Fleming College and Sioux College. But I went to Sioux College because I wanted to be closer to my family, my home. I took the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Technician Program. Well, growing up in the traditional way and the knowledge, and then suddenly going into the Western science part of it, it was hard to grasp that information. And it was hard to kind of like let go of the traditional knowledge part because I had to accept the fact that there is other information out there besides the traditional knowledge. But in the end, you know, I started looking at it both ways like both of these could complement each other and you know i think it could make a difference opening those doors up to the western science of it opened up a lot of conversations with other people you know like professors from algoma and you know scientists from the forest the forestry center and, and they want to know more they would ask like am i allowed to teach that you know, to other students that come into this program. And I said, of course, it's like teach as much people as you could. You know, I was there learning the Western knowledge, but I was also teaching the traditional knowledge. And they started having more indigenous knowledge classes that you have to take just to get kind of that perspective. It was actually my last day at Sioux College and I wrote my last exam. So I went to go say bye to all the professors in the Native Lounge. I saw a posting, a Water First posting for an internship on Manitoulin Island. Well, great, you know, like I could work home, I can be at home for a while until I figure out what I wanna do. I applied. Yeah, I started working almost immediately when I got home. 
So I was on the Manitoulin pilot project. It was an 18 month contract. Uh, we worked at our communities, or at our water treatment plants. We had two interns per community. The purpose of the program of the internship was to train us in environmental water science, learn how to run a plant. We uh, did our water quality analyst, which is more kind of like environmental and our source water. We had source water protection, planning training. But yeah, it was a great, it was a great experience. I made a lot of friends and I kept in contact with Water First as well after I graduated. You know, getting all that training in water and science and environmental. It definitely opened up a lot of doors. So there's a, a wide range of careers that you can go after this internship. I ended up taking the environmental technician job at Wanapate and I've worked there for about two and a half years. Just doing surface water sampling for all the mine sites in the territory, Wanapate's territory. So I live in Sudbury, right? And uh, it's so busy. My mind's always running. It's always like a schedule and, you know, routine and stuff. So once COVID happened, we all got laid off. Me and my kids just moved back here, back home. Um, I know the, my community needed a lot of help. I ended up working for the Wiki Health Center for a bit, and I helped with isolation kits and uh, reporting any, any symptoms that communities might have, community members. At this point, like I was enjoying my time home, Kendra came along with another job opportunity. I was like, I don't know. And with my kids, I was like, I don't know if I want to go back to Wana Pate right now. And I was telling Kendra this. She's like, I have this opportunity if you're interested. And she sent me the local coordinator position for the next internship for Water First. So I applied for that. There wasn't much traditional knowledge in my internship, I know I pushed the Water First staff in adding more um, guest speakers and try to get the traditional knowledge more involved in this internship so they can learn both ways and they could use both ways. I guess the main focus that I had for the interns was to teach them not to forget their culture and to remember like who they are and what they're supposed to be doing, how important the water is, not just for us, but you know, for, for other beings out there. Kwanja Lake is a, is a place where they used to see the Chiganebic is what we call them. It's a big snake, right? You see where it's like kind of clear and then all of a sudden it's just dark. Yeah. It just drops. And I think it was what, 1300 feet? I brought the traditional knowledge workshop to my home Everything was just here, like all my resources were here. I know all the medicines here. I know all the guest speakers. Most of these teachings here will be at, in their communities as well, because we're you know, in the same region. I'm sharing this with you because it's something that I have gone through, I know, and I understand. My mother, who is a grandmother in my community is a grandmother for Water First. So all my interns know who she is. They call her their grandmother. They would say like, is it okay if I contact your mother? If I wanna share more with her, I wanna hear more. And so I wanted to teach them also like how we used to go get our own food. I was surprised on how much of the interns have never filleted a fish. So it was very, very rewarding to see them leave the workshop, you know, like saying, oh, I filleted a fish and like I could fillet fish now, I know what to do. I could see water first growing far, like across Canada and helping all these first stages, especially up north. So that's where I see myself doing. 
I see myself helping other First Nations across Canada, hopefully with safe drinking water, traditional knowledge, getting that Western science, and just gaining these relationships with them, learning their traditions and their cultures.